How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tricks when it comes to procedural shading. This is gonna speed up some of your calculations and it's gonna help you with a little bit more photorealism while you're designing. We'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both EV and cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural, so everything is editable, giving you control of how you want your design to look. All updates are free upon purchasing, so head over to duckey3d.com and check it out. All right, so we're gonna jump into the shading workspace right up here. Now, if you've seen my shading tutorials a lot in the past, you'll know that if I'm combining multiple bump patterns, we're gonna have multiple bump nodes. Now recently I came across a hack. Now the reason why this is a bit of a problem is the more bump nodes, the more calculations, the longer your materials are gonna to have to load in Eevee. And that is kind of annoying. Um, and I like to keep it max three bump nodes and that's still really annoying. So this is the old way, just for some context. This is the old way I used to shade. This isn't connected. But yeah, using each pattern has its own bump node but let me show you how to combine these two. Just so for some context, we're just gonna go ahead and build this material. Not too, not too complex. So we're gonna get a bump node, of course. Probably should have kept that. But um, we'll do the bump node here, and then we'll get a color ramp. And we're gonna need two color ramps, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Shift D and duplicate that. And then I'm gonna get a Voronoi. Um, just for some context, so we can have a really wide um, pattern and a really skinny pattern. So I'm gonna plug the distance into this color ramp here and plug the color into the height of my bump node. And right here on F1, we're gonna to go to distance to edge to get that kind of cracking, it used to be called crackle in the old blender um, pattern. And this is what I want right here, just so that we can have some cracks going on. Now, what I also wanna do is get a noise texture. So we'll plug this noise texture straight here and then we're gonna to need to get something to combine these two, which is going to be a mix RGB. So I'm gonna plug this one here and then I'm gonna switch it over so we can look at the noise texture. So I'm gonna bring the factor over here. I just wanna focus on the noise texture. So I'm gonna bring my detail up to 12 and bring my roughness right about here. And then here on my color ramp, I do want it to eat into the material. All right, something like that. So that's what we want. And then if we bring this over here to the middle, that's how it used to look. And in terms of photorealism, this isn't entirely accurate. I mean, outside of this being a, this Voronoi being unrealistic, I would add more detail to that. But in terms of the not being realistic is this pattern basically overlapping on this cut, especially in spots like here. And you'll understand that more once we do this trick. So what I'm going to do, notice we're only using one bump node. So we're already achieving what I used to do, but I don't like this. I'm gonna bring this, this mix RGB up and we're gonna use this factor. So I'm basically going to use this noise texture as a mask to reveal the other material, the other pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this color ramp, plug the factor up here. And because this is going to be a mask, I'm actually gonna switch this over from linear to constant so we can get a precise edge on where we're gonna be revealing things. Now let's just go ahead and plug color straight into the factor. So you'll notice it's kind of cutting through like this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring this black portion and just bring invert it like that. And then now we're gonna play with it like this. So I'm gonna bring the white over out to get out of the way. And you'll notice now we're revealing the crack and that's what we wanted. So you'll notice now this big noise texture is hovering over. So if we just kind of play with this, we can bring this precisely, see if I can get even more zoomed in, here we go. So I want this edge to meet this edge perfectly. So I'm gonna hold down shift and on this position slider and then just bring it just so that, see those flat portions? I want the crack to fill in those black, uh, the, the flat portions perfectly. Now we have a perfect edge and notice it's going over it, but they're not revealing both of each other at the same time. And that's gonna give you a little bit more realism. So now if I go ahead and play with the noise texture and the scale, you're gonna get a better look just like that. So you can play with that and it's eating into it. Now keep in mind, if you're gonna play with, adjust your color ramp, you're gonna need to adjust this color ramp up here as well. 
Um, but other than that, I'm sure there's some other ways you can achieve this, but this is the way I achieve my effect there where this roughness is going over it, just like that. That's one of my favorite tricks. Now this works in tons of different ways of combining patterns. This is just one of the ways, but helping you with some realism and also helping optimize some of your calculations with just using one bump node, just a lot, this is just a lot different than the way I used to teach these uh, materials. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check out Real-Time Materials, the new update, hit the link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching.